Greetings and salutations, and thank you for clicking on the video. We're going to talk about some strangeness I ran into in Ubuntu Mate. I got a lot of little things to talk about in this video. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about something that's coming up real soon that some of you are really going to like. So stick around to the end if you can. The last video I posted, I was talking about Ubuntu Mate, and I was enjoying using it on my old Dell box here. But I ran into some strange issues, which I'm going to show you, and they turned out to be showstoppers. So I went back to Linux Mint 18, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that at the end of this video, because this video is really about the issues that I found. I am not slamming Ubuntu Mate. I am not saying that you shouldn't use Ubuntu Mate. I'm saying that with my particular workflow and use case that I had some issues with Ubuntu Mate. Ubuntu Mate is an awesome distribution of Linux. Here it is running in a virtual machine and I will demonstrate the issues that I found and I will explain them. It turned out to be a combination of just the tools that I was using, the hardware that I'm using, and the just the way it all came together so you may never ever see any of these problems first off I have to run Compiz as my desktop window manager if I'm going to use a Mate desktop on this machine because it has an old AMD 4200 video card in it and there are no proprietary drivers available for it there used to be, years ago, when I was running Ubuntu 10.10 on this machine, that's how old it is, but there are, are not anymore. After Ubuntu 12.04, they went away. So if you're running anything based on Ubuntu, you just have to use the open source drivers. That's not a problem. If you run Compiz, then it takes care of the screen tearing issues that I run into sometimes if I'm not using a more advanced window manager. So I hope you understand all I just said because that's the crux of the problem. So I have this virtual machine pretty much set up the same way that I had the, you know, the system set up when I was running it on the computer on hardware. And the first thing that I want to show you that I ran into was, okay, I've got a window open and you see that Compiz gives us a preview when we hover over the button in the window switcher. That's cool. I actually really like that feature. But if I switch desktops in the Ubuntu Mate here, so now I'm on desktop number two, and I hover over here, I still get the preview. I first noticed this issue in Ubuntu Mate 14.04, so it's been around for quite some time. This is definitely not a showstopper. This is just one of those little weird things that happens with computers sometimes, and you go, huh, but it certainly is not going to stop me from using the distro. So what was it that stopped me from using the distro? My daily browser is Google Chrome. And Google Chrome, in combination with the video card that I have on this machine, and Compiz, and the Mate desktop, does some pretty strange stuff. So we'll go ahead and open it up. I can't demonstrate it because I don't have the problem here in the virtual machine. It works fine, but I'll show you kind of what it does, okay? Let's go to internet, go to Google Chrome, and I've got Google Chrome open. Everything's cool. Now let me go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, I've got the title bar on, so let me go ahead and get rid of that because ordinarily I run Google Chrome without it. So I minimize Google Chrome. I go to do something on the desktop. Desktop is dead. I'm holding the mouse down and I'm trying to highlight the desktop. You'll see that that's not working at all. If I right click, no menu pops up. None. I think in the virtual, no, it's, it's actually, I've got the entire problem. This is great. The last time that I tried this, I didn't have the problem in the virtual machine, but now it is doing exactly what it did on my hardware. So you see this desktop is dead. I'm clicking all over the place. If I go to the next desktop, now I got a right click menu, I can create a folder, I can highlight things, everything's hunky dory. I go back to the desktop that I'm working on, it's dead. So the 
YouTube video gods are with me because I'm able to actually replicate the problem. Like I said, I tried this before and it, it didn't, the bug didn't reproduce. So this is the problem. Now this is annoying because my workflow involves a lot of times having a browser open and then I'll go, I'll, I'll like save a file, download something and I'll want to go open the home folder. I can't do it. It doesn't work. I can always go get it from here, of course. I can go to home and now it'll open up. We got no problem, but I can't, uh, well, let's see, I think the desktop reactivated itself because I couldn't even drag windows. Well, see, I can't drag the window. See that? I'm trying. So this desktop is effectively dead. I'm so happy that bug reproduced itself here for this video. So this is annoying. I mean, having to switch a desktop to be able to do something because your browser is minimized, thats I, I really can't work with that on a daily basis. So after fooling around with that for a couple of days and doing a lot of research on the web and seeing if I could find a, a way to fix this, I did find one way to do it. So let's see, probably not going to be able to reproduce it a second time, but let me open that back up. All right, open up Google Chrome there. Let's see if we still have the problem. Yep, dead desktop. One way that you can get around that problem is to just use the title bar. All right, that's why I had it turned on earlier because I was playing around with this before I started the video. And if I turn the title bar on, for some reason or other, Compiz goes, oh, okay, and it allows me to do things with the desktop. But with that title bar turned off, like that, which is the normal way I want I would want to use Google Chrome, dead desktop. Great. Running the title bar on in Google Chrome for me is uh, something that I just can't deal with. And the reason why is because now it won't even open. Now I can't even maximize Google Chrome. There it comes. If I do that, then what happens is, to me, it feels like it takes a long time to actually get to the web page because you've got the panel up top, then you've got the title bar, which is useless. It's just buttons. And then you have the tab bar. Got to have the tab bar. Then you got the address bar. And I like to use the bookmarks bar as well. So by the time I actually get down to the web page, we're this far down on the screen. And it's like, it bugs me. Of course, you could always just full size the thing, not a problem. So yeah, I mean, there wasn't anything intrinsically wrong with Ubuntu Mate. It worked beautifully on this machine. I had no major issues, but just the combination of all those little weirdnesses going on got to a place where I was like, you know, I, this is going to drive me crazy. It was one of those little annoyances. And so I ended up going back to Linux Mint 18. These are all known issues that the Mate developers are working on. And probably by the next release, they may be fixed. Uh, so I went ahead and looked at all those bugs and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, like I said, if you don't use the Compiz desktop, the window manager then you don't have those problems so if you're going to use Ubuntu Mate I would suggest that you try going to Mate Tweak and changing your window manager to Marco with the uh, GPU acceleration and if your video card doesn't have the tearing issue which probably most modern cards do not then you're not going to have a problem and Google Chrome and the desktop are going to work perfectly. It's just a combination of the equipment that I have and the way I set up the system. So there you go. That is enough about Ubuntu Mate. So we can go ahead and shut that down. I would like to take some time in the rest of this video to talk a bit about Linux Mint 18 and some of the things that I noticed there. So Linux Mint 18 works great. I've done a lot of videos about Linux Mint. I'm not going to take you on a tour of the system. This is the same setup that I have used in the past. I'm using the Mint Y Dark theme, which I like an awful lot. And 
the first thing that I noticed was that my audio issues went away. I remember I said in the video that I had posted about Ubuntu 1604 a while back that uh, just with the Unity desktop that I was having some strange audio issues. Don't seem to have those in Linux Mint, so that's cool. Then I ran into the dreaded network manager bug problem because Linux Mint 18 is based on Ubuntu 16.04 and so therefore I guess it's inherited from Ubuntu. My way to fix that was to write this funny little script here that basically just resets the network manager applet. I have suggested in videos and on forums before I've even attempted to you know contact the developers for the network manager applet in in the gnome desktop because ubuntu says the problem is coming down from gnome i, I have said several places that what they really need to do is, is just add a reset button here so when you open the applet you should have a button up here that says reset and each user should be able to essentially tell the system to refresh and then reload the networks the problem specifically that i'm having with it is that if the machine goes to sleep and I do like to have my machines go to sleep when I'm not using them and I come back about every other time it's not connected and the network manager applet is frozen you can't do anything with it at all so the only way to fix that that I see is to restart network manager so I wrote this here little script to do that there it is and I will put this script in the description for the video because I can and then once I wrote that I just created a file called net restart, made it executable, and then copied it to the system bin directory. Now, those of you who are into programming for Linux, you're going to say, well, you really shouldn't put it in bin because that's for system-only resources and all that stuff. You should create a bin folder in your home directory and do all that and whatever. Or local user, local share, bin, wherever. I don't care. I just throw them all in bin. It just, that way the system finds them and I know where they are. So anyway, once I get that once I have that written, then all I have to do is to come in here to the menu, go to configure, open up the menu editor, which opens up a la carte. And then I put it in administration and I scroll down to the bottom here you'll see the one that I've added so highlight that click on properties and it's just it says uh, network manager restart and then there's the path to that particular command and then here we have a description of what it does tell it to launch in a terminal and so now I have created a menu item that will launch that particular little script that I wrote and once it's in the menu then I can tell the system to throw it down here in the panel with all of my other shortcuts so if I come in here and sit down and the machine is not working I can't get internet it's no big deal I don't have to open up a terminal and type in the command I just click down here and then I have this funny little prompt here and then it just issues the command to system CTL which is part of system D to tell it to restart the service and there you go that's how I'm dealing with that so hopefully they'll fix it at some point down the road here I wanted to make a comment for those of you who I get a comment every now and again going man you keep hopping distros why don't you just stick with a distro find one you kind of like and then get used to it and all that stuff and uh, you know part of the reason that I change distros a lot is because of the YouTube channel I like to show you guys what I come across Second of all, if I am consulting other people on what to install on their computers if they want to run Linux, then I kind of need to know what's going on out there. So, yeah, if you're an average user, I say pick one if you like it and stick with it. But if you're doing what I'm doing, which is a community outreach on YouTube and elsewhere, it's a good idea to keep up with what's going on with the distros. Although I had said earlier that I wasn't going to do a whole lot of distro reviews. I just want to get away from that. A lot of other YouTubers do that. Of course, we're going to be looking at some of the big distro reviews, but that's the reason why I do it. I'm not just, you know, got itchy feet and can't stand in one place for any period of time. I get curious, and it's like I want to check that out. And plus, this is Linux, which means that you 
swim in a myriad of choices in the Linux community, how could you not check out what's going on with other distros? So there you go. That's why I do this. Now, finally, one final note before I wrap this video up, and that is coming up next week, we are going to attempt to do another Mr. Server and Mr. Desktop. And I think this is one that you guys are really going to like because what we're going to do is we're going to devote the entire show to networking between Linux computers. If you have a network of Linux computers in your house, we're going to talk about a way to exchange files and administer those machines that nobody else in the Linux community seems to be talking about. Jeremy O'Connell from CyberWeb Solutions and I have kind of come up with our own way of doing this and we can't really see we can't really find a lot of documentation plus along those lines we got a big big surprise for for the entire Linux community that we're going to be sharing uh, that has to do with network management and what we're going to be talking about it's going to be not just a show where you learn something but we're going to give you something that you can use if you are a somebody who administers a lot of Linux machines. That's all I'm going to say for now. You're going to have to wait until the video comes out. We're going to attempt to get it done next week. It may be a little bit further down the road because we got some other things that we got to get going before we can actually do the video. And it will all make sense when the video comes along. Thanks for watching, gang. I do appreciate it. Be sure and check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great articles about Linux. That is where you can hear from everyday Linux users just like yourself with all sorts of tips and tricks and opinions and fun and that is at freedompenguin.com. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.